so um, I've kind of missed the past few months. So this is like a supersized blockbuster October and November favorites. So the past two months I've been traveling a lot and uh, I was very pleasantly surprised on the flight. So I went to Peru and that's like a 25 hour flight split into two legs. Um, I gotta say SQ had a really really good selection of stuff to watch this time and if you've been following me for a while you will know that I'm not really a TV or movie person but I watched so much on this flight so let me bring you through one of the movies I watched um, it's called Lady Bird and it's about this girl it's kind of like a coming of age drama and oh my gosh so bad of names this actress was in oh my gosh I'm so bad of name <laughs> name name Lady Bird, Lady Bird. Oh. <laughs> so, Ronan. However you pronounce it, Ronan. Sirsha. Sirsha. That's why I don't remember your name. Um, so she's the star in this movie and I've watched her in yeah, the other show that she was in, the one where she was coming in from Ireland to New York. Yes, I'm waiting for you to check that oh, for me. Yeah. <laughs> Brooklyn. Brooklyn! That's right, Brooklyn. <laughs> so okay, so she was in Brooklyn and I thought she was uh, really good. Like her performance, it was very nuanced and um, honestly very mature for someone so young. And in this show, she plays like a... Yeah, you're going through that very awkward stage of you're like not quite a teenager. But you're kind of a teenager, not quite an adult, but you want to be an adult. And it was honestly very touching. Like it reminded me of myself and all the stuff that I put my parents through. Sorry, mom. Um, yeah, so you kind of go through with her as she, she goes through her insecurities. Um, you know, trying to be cool, trying to fit in. I could totally relate to all of these. And how she um, not deliberately kind of hurt, hurt her parents and her family in the process. So it's kind of, um, it was quite touching and it was one of those shows that I feel like a lot of people could relate to so I don't know, was this even in the movies? I totally missed this, I don't know if this is like a sleeper hit or if it even made it to the movies but if you haven't watched it, go watch Lady Bird. So another favourite show, <laughs> and this makes me sound very behind time, so I love English period drama but for some reason I've just never watched Downton Abbey. I think I've just never gotten around to it even though friends who know that I like that genre have told me to watch it. So on this really long haul flight that I was on, um, they actually had the complete season 1 of Downton Abbey and I was supposed to sleep because it was 12 hours and I was to land at 5am so I was like okay, get on the flight, sleep through and I'll wake up fresh and I can go straight to work because I had a full day of work when I landed. Um, but I ended up watching the first episode and then the second and third and I just finished the entire first season and by that time, it was time to eat and then it was time to get off the plane so I slept for like I think one hour um, anyway I really loved Downton Abbey because it it's everything that people said I would like I mean it's English period drama it's really really good acting um, my favorite person in the show is actually the grouchy old aunt played by someone who is a very famous British actress, very acclaimed. Um, anyway, so she was awesome in the role. Like she, when she comes on screen, she has sort of this like formidable presence. Um, but then there's a soft side to her as well. Basically, a lot of really good conversation, really good acting, and Liring is laughing behind the camera. Maggie Smith. Maggie Smith, that's right. Don't laugh at me. Yeah, so she was fantastic and my favorite character in the show. She has this annoying parrot. Um, like a horrible parrot that she loves that everyone has to kind of love as well but anyway I'm saying if you ever watch Downton Abbey this sounds really late and really lame but go watch it another show that I caught on this really long haul flight um, from Singapore to Peru actually it was the Singapore to Amsterdam leg um, this one no surprise it's a favorite of mine it's from one of my favorite books and I've watched a few adaptations of it it's Little Women by Louisa May Alcott which is actually it's not English period because that was set in the American Civil War period um, but it's it's also period drama and it's very slow moving and there's a lot of talk more action I can't show um, so I, I read the book I think when I was probably very young like seven years old and my mom bought me the children's version of Little Women because it's one of my mom's favorite books and of course when I grew up I, I read the unabridged complete novel and I loved it and then I've watched different versions of the show and on SQ they had the BBC version I think BBC just made a new um, 
suggestion. They did one before, oh but God, this is the new, one. new yeah, BBC version, I and it's spread into three well. parts. And I just devoured that stuff yeah. for hours. Um, I think it was about two hours each part, and I just watched it through. Yeah, so it's very good, Little Women. If you are a fan of the book, you would love the show. The character of Joe, the actress who played Joe in the BBC version that I watched. I wasn't that taken with her, but she kind of grows on you as, as you watch more and more. And I actually forgot the ending of Little Women, so um, I was a bit upset. <laughs> then after that, when it happened, I was like, oh yeah, I was upset when I read the book as well. I have no idea why Jo ended up with whoever she ended up with, but I shall not spoil it for you if you've not watched it or read it. Although it's a classic, you should know this. Go watch it, Little Women, the BBC version. Okay, another favourite, and this is kind of a silly favourite, is this... Um, <laughs> It's kind of like, okay, so it doubles up as like a hand accessory. I actually bought it because I thought it was a hand accessory, but then the other day, I forgot to bring a hair tie, my hair was all over the place and I used it as a hair tie, and it looks quite cute on the hair as well. So I got this from Peru, um, from some random stall, but it was, they would have these long rows of these and they would have all different colors and it's just really cute and it reminds me of the scrunchie, remember that word? Reveals the age. The scrunchie of the 80s, but kind of redone for this era. The next favourite, and this one sounds a bit like, a bit mushy lah, which I hardly am, but I got these in Ho Chi Minh. Actually, okay, I saw this first, so th this is like a bangle. These days, I'm very particular about bangles and bracelets because I find that when I cannot fasten it easily, I tend not to wear it. I'm always in a rush. And then, most of the time when I leave the house, my husband is not at home. So, it's just me versus the bangle or bracelet, and then if it's like too finicky to put on, I just end up not wearing it. So I tend to pick stuff that you know that I can put on my on my own and uh, so this one's a magnetic thing I really liked it because um, if you see it has like this star detail but I also really liked it because it's my size I have really small wrists so I am quite particular like I don't like it when bangles are too big um, so this to me fits perfectly I think the perfect fit is when it just sits just below the wrist bone Sounds really fussy. Anyway, so the romantic and slightly mushy part of this story is they actually had a guy version of this, which I got from my husband. So it's a, uh, his has a double band. And it also runs a bit small, but his wrists aren't huge as well. So I actually got my friend's dad to model it for me. And it fit just nice. So you can see this is the much bigger version. So now we have matching leather bangles. Okay, um, another favorite that I got is this pink beret. I know I have a few berets, like I have a red one. Uh, but this one, this is like so pretty, it's dusty pink. I got this in Peru and um, I don't know, it's just something. I mean, I love dusty pink if you know, like I actually have quite a lot of this shade in my wardrobe. Too many pieces in dusty pink, but now I have a beret! Ta-da! Okay, this one is um, a favorite that the friend who let me use her body lotion when we were in Korea last year, but I never actually bought one for myself. and. I have really really dry skin, so body lotions don't really cut it, I need creams. Uh, here's the body lotion version and I found this in the airport. It's this 24 hour moisture ultra sheer body cream. So this is the cream version, it is really really luxurious, like it's really thick. I would say use the lotion version if you don't have as dry skin but I love it because it really moisturizes. Um, even in cold countries it moisturizes and the thing that I really like about this is the scent. So this is the sweet pea scent, I think this is one of probably their best-selling scents and for good reason it's, it's like I don't know how to describe this scent it's it's generally on the sweet side it's like a very very extremely sweet sugary floral if that's the way to describe it and if you know me I like scents that are sweet and heavy so sweet pea I like this I ended up buying the body wash as well so I have like the matching set it's almost finished so you know Christmas present Okay, another favorite for the month are these earrings from Pomelo. Look how cute they are. So I love pearls, and I actually like earrings that sit at this length, like not too long. I don't know why, it's just... Yeah, and I like hoops, but I don't like hoops that are too large sometimes, but these are perfect. And then they're actually light enough. Okay, they're not super light, but they're light enough that I can wear them because I have very... Um, my earlobes nowadays cannot take too heavy earrings, but look, it has these like cute bubbles, um, like gemstones on the pearls which looks like a almost like a diseased pearl which sounds weird that I like that but something about this I really like another favorite is a manicure that I got last month um, so I have quite different nails right now um, 
but last month I had this manicure that was so cute it was like blue pastel and yellow pastel and then I had two fingers that were just clear with with multi-colored triangles you can see on my Instagram I thought that was like the cutest thing and so far I have to say it's my favorite manicure so far so it's gonna be hard to beat that like not like these but that one I wish it would stay on for longer anyone have any idea why even though I do jelly shaped chips like that is it just that I'm very tall or what? <laughs> favorite songs for the months of October and November um, I like one that's really mushy it's called 8 Letters guess what the 8 letters are Okay, no prizes live. you cannot guess, I'll tell you. Eight letters spell I love you. So it's about someone who wants to tell someone else that they love them, but then they cannot say it because, I don't know, I guess they're scared or something. I mean, for me, right, I, I have problems saying I love you first. Like if I'm in a relationship where I'm seeing someone new um, and he hasn't said it to me yet, yeah, I have issues. So. So I could relate to the song like I thought about all the times where like I was with someone and I really loved them but I didn't really dare to say it because I don't know, what if it's not reciprocated? Plus the worst thing, what if I say I love you and the person goes Thank you or like me too Like me too is so... It's such a copper answer I feel if you like at least say I love you too Okay anyway, I digress So this song has a very uh, nice melody It's It's... It's very pretty sounding. It, it just came out like last month and it has very meaningful lyrics and like I said, I could relate. So yes, yeah, one of my favorite songs for the month of November. So another favorite song that I happened to chance upon um, in the past two months is by Cigarettes After Sex and it's called Apocalypse. I It was just on a Spotify playlist that, and it happened to come up and I was like, what is this song? It's so depressing. It's so melancholic, but so beautiful um, that I was obsessed. So I just kept listening to it over and over again. I would say if you're like really depressed, don't listen to it over and over again because it's really quite depressing. But it's such a beautiful song. And I, I actually went to Google it and I realized that it's off a movie soundtrack or off some show soundtrack. But obviously I never watched the show, so I don't know how old this song is, but Apocalypse by Cigarettes After Sex. It's so good. I listened to the rest of their stuff. Oh my gosh, it will slit your wrist after that. Just depressing. So if you have time for just one depressing song, that one is it. So those are my favourites for the months of October and November. I'm so sorry that I kind of had to give you the blockbuster version. It's because I've been travelling a lot and I've been busy, but honestly, I will try not to do that again. Let's try to keep it in a more timely fashion. Uh, but let me know if you have any favourites for that you've discovered. Books, movies, songs, food, beauty products, whatever. Share them um, in the comment box below so I can check them out as well. Otherwise, I'll catch you on Facebook, on Instagram, and soon to be no more Twitter. Bye!